What is the value of antiquities? What is the difference between rarity and antiques? Why are antique shops and art salons so popular? Famous collectors from Almaty, Baku and Tashkent will talk about this in Colors of Asia. Hello, you're watching Colors of Asia. I'm Gabdira Shedbodbaev. Many of us are skeptical about antiquities and don't think that all of them are trash. For some items, collectors are ready to pay big money, therefore never rush to get rid of all things. Fortunately, there are antique shops and art salons like one of those where we are now. Thanks to such places, many valuable objects are still alive, and people have the opportunity to not only get acquainted with the art of past years, but also to be the owners of the rarest items. Once you get here, it feels like a small museum where exhibits of different genres and different eras are presented. Many tourists who come to Almaty are eager to visit this art salon. Even such world stars as director Kim ki were here and expressed their delight. And this is most likely because commercial activity is necessarily coexisting here with other goals and objectives. Of course, it's not a museum, but we perform some educational function. Although for ourselves, we have decided that we do this out of our love to art, that our hobby has grown into our work, and work remains our hobby. It's an honor for me to represent the younger generation in such a beautiful art shop. Certainly, I would like young people to become more interested in works of art and antiques, because it's actually our history, it's part of our ancestors. The executive director of the art shop, Maya Abishova, is the granddaughter of the famous Kazakh film director, Oras Abishov. The atmosphere has always been creative in the family, so Maya's presence here is not surprising. Maya says she is happy because she has found her vacation and is engaged in what gives her great pleasure. In conversation with us, Maya compared their art salon with many auction houses, antique shops of which there are a lot in European countries and the American continent. They may carry some kind of history, at least some of them, but mostly they are small, commercial and not particularly interesting. These are more street shops. Our shop differs from such street shops and its variety and our content, because art is love. Our shop has various goods from different times and eras, but we were able to combine these different eras into one shop. How do we manage to do this? This is because my colleagues have a lot of experience. Thanks to them, we were able to place everything correctly. When people visit us, they are pleased and they like our creative atmosphere here. Most importantly, there is nothing old about our shop. It's full of life. Probably not everyone can give an accurate definition to such concepts as antiques and rarities. How do they differ from each other? I must say that in this salon, for example, we went through an educational program on this topic and clearly learned that antiques are Asian objects that are more than 50 years old and each museum have a certain historical and artistic value. As for the rarities, these are rare things produced in the limited edition. By the way, modern objects can be safely attributed to them, but not everything old is necessarily antiques and rarities. There was a case recently when some people brought us a book of stamps and they thought that these stamps had great value and significance. But when our specialist Vasily looked at these stamps, it was clear 
the stamps do not represent any value. Yes, they are really old, but they are not rare. First, we pay attention to the aesthetic component of the subject, or artistic value, historical value. And when you feel that you're holding an interesting item in your hands, you feel like there's something special in it. And it's great that afterwards we can study all this, conduct some kind of research, and then we can say that this item may not be unique, but at least it has collector's value and most often historical and artistic value. When you work in a shop with such an atmosphere, some item can have a special place in your heart. My favorite piece is this mask. It's very rare, it's made of gold. Its holder is made of onyx. It has precious stones, rubies and pearls. You can see it here. And if we wash all this gold, then it will be of decent weight. I personally feel closer to contemporary art, but in any case today it is contemporary art, in 50 years, according to our law, it will be antiques, and in 100 years it will be art, antique art. The special pride of this salon is the collection of paintings. Here are the works of such famous artists of Kazakhstan as Salihidin Aitbaev, Yevgeny Sidorkin and Nagimbek Nurmuhamedov. Here is, for example, our favorite artist Alek Kaminaris, a man whom we have been friends with for more than 20 years. A wonderful painter graduated from the Sura Institute, the youngest artist who illustrated books for children about Lenin. And at that time, it was impossible to get such an order. What is the interest here? The fact that he easily, freely conveys our way of life. This work is called At the Yurt by Alek Kaminaris, and it's very close to me. What do I like about this work? It's very juicy, and you can see something from your childhood in it. We have another friend, Vladimir Fomichev. He is of a respectful age, but he creates all the time. And I would like to show you the panel The Way of the Nomad. Why is it interesting? Here is the history of the movement of nomads from east to west. You can see the traces of a horse, cart, arrows, petroglyphs, which were left by nomads along the way. This is another part of the shop. This is a special corner that is also connected with the history of Kazakhstan. It's known that in 1966, the factory of decorative and applied arts souvenir was launched in Almaty. Its very appearance was due to the fact that at the time there was a lack of souvenirs and gift items of local production. At that time, highly qualified jewelers from all over the Soviet Union were invited to the country. Here, for example, this desktop device with the image of Leonid Brezhnev is made in the style of the Florentine mosaic. This is an extremely difficult technique, and not every craftsman can cope with such a task. And quite expensive stone is used at the base of the stand. It's rhodonite. It's quite expensive. Or, for example, masterpieces made of Melchior. For example, many of us remember the symbol of the contest, Asia Dausa, or the Hotel Kazakhstan, which is performed in this national style. Very pleasant, Melchior products with silver and semi-precious stones. 
I could talk a lot about each of these items. We have a mini collection, and this is what we're proud of, because there is practically nothing to compare it with. Of course, there are significant objects that are stored in the exposition of the Central State Museum, but we are in honorable second place. When it comes to antiques, then of course you need to understand that secondhand books are of particular value in this regard. Local historian Vasily Lazarevsky explained to us some of the subtleties. What is the historical and price policy of a particular subject, in particular an antiquarian book? The first point is that the book is the best carrier of historical information of a people. And even if the person is not familiar with the subject, he will understand a situation faster rather than being explained how any given painting is beautiful or not. The second moment, which influences the price policy and interest in secondhand books, books are not forged. This is one of the guarantors that money can be safely invested in this way. Well, the third point is that it retains a historical value in Kazakhstan and in any other country. It helps us not only remember, but also learn. Because modern gadgets, unfortunately, take the younger generation away from the wise, the good, the eternal. Now in the hands of Vasily you see real antiques, a rare book, the author of which is the first doctor of historical sciences in Kazakhstan, Yermohan Bekmohanov. But how not to treat this book without trepidation if I accidentally find it at the flea market? I then study a more detailed story about this man. For this book, a man was accused of nationalism and received 25 years in Stalin's camps. There is even his autograph and handwriting, and this only adds to the price of the second-hand edition. This book is just the rarest one, really. And this is literary textbook. In Kazakh, was released in 1934 in Latin. It published stories for children by Kazakh writers, many of whom were subsequently repressed. In 1940, after the transition of the Kazakh language to the Cyrillic alphabet, all such publications were destroyed, and only a few have survived to this day. Oh, let's take this book, Shananov's self-instructional book of Kazakh language for Russians. A wonderful and rare edition. For people who come here and for those Slavic people who have already lived here, this textbook was developed especially for them. Shananov unfortunately was accused of having connections with Alashorda people and was shot. Here is another rare book. This is the first edition of Mukhtar Awezov's novel Abai, for which the author received the Stalin Prize. It became the foundation for the two-volume book The Path of Abai. For this richly designed book, pay attention to the leather binding, chic embossing, gilded letters. It was published for the 75th anniversary of the creative activity of Jabul Jabayev separately in the Russian version and in the Kazakh language in the Latin script. The publication is small, with a total of 10,000 copies. Imagine the population of the Soviet Union and only 10,000 copies. Moreover, in such excellent preservation that it is of no small importance for literature. Here is such a wonderful lithograph of Jean Beau. It's just brilliance. One cannot get used to such books and one simply cannot take them in hand without trepidation. In this salon you cannot touch everything without trepidation. After all, this is not only beauty, it's high art, artistic value and great history. And it's also the dedication of collectors who know how to appreciate the eternal and teach others to do so. It must be admitted that collecting antiques and rare items is one of the most popular hobbies these days. Perhaps this is because any old thing only becomes more valuable over the years. Respectively, this is a reliable way to increase capital for its owner. By the way, many well-known collectors do not recommend collecting everything. They believe that one category of items is sufficient for effectiveness. And now we will go to Baku, where you will meet a very interesting person. 
Zakir Gahramanov is an experienced collector. The name of this man is known to many in Azerbaijan because in his collection there are hundreds of different items that people used many centuries ago. These are old jugs, samovars, tea services and lamps. I had an interest in collecting since my school years. At first I collected empty match boxes and I wanted to have them as many as possible. Then I got interested in old things. I knew some people who collected carpets, copper dishes, silver items. I really liked it because it's connected with our history and culture. I began to study historical and archaeological documents, tried to discover something new through ancient things, many of which were no longer used in modern life. So I became a collector. And I can say that this is a very interesting activity. They say about Zakir Gahramanov that he is a collector to the core. Matchboxes, postage stamps, this is what attracted him as a teenager. And it was then that he developed the traits that are necessary for a true collector. In addition, he formed rules for himself, which he never changed and will not change. I have items that I will not sell for any price because they complement a particular collection, make it more valuable, and it inspires me. As the number of items grows, so does my knowledge about them. And any collector should have a good knowledge in history, geography, and chemistry. For example, I need to know how to distinguish bronze from copper, by what criteria the age of objects is determined, or how to distinguish a fake from the original. And all this requires extensive knowledge. I can say that I'm still learning. Now I have a large collection of copper items. I'm proud of this collection. You can see only part of it. I collected jugs, dishes, lamps and much more. These are examples of Azerbaijani applied art. The oldest of them dates back to the 17th century. We determine the age of the object by the pattern of ornament, engraving, since these are not factory products and the date of production was not set on such vessels. Their value is in engravings. The richer the ornaments are, the more interesting they are. They are made by hand, so such ancient objects are extremely rare today. This is called sarkuch. People usually think it's a warrior's headgear, but it's not. You would be surprised, but this item covered a dish with pilaf so that it would not go cold. Here is such an aesthetic and at the same time practical purpose of it. That vessel was also used in everyday life. Sherbet was poured into it and distributed to guests. At that time, such items were considered luxury and they were used mainly by wealthy people. I also have old Frege products. As you know, Joseph Frege came from France to Poland and opened a factory there for the production of dishes which was in great demand in the 19th century, not only in Europe, but also in Tsarist Russia. Therefore, some copies came into our country. This dish was used at the king's palaces. Of course, these items are not pure silver. Frage developed the material by obtaining it from an alloy of various materials, but the coating is silver, and sometimes it is called Polish silver. I also have samples of products made at the factories of Norblin, Werner, Plifkiewicz, the brothers Buch, and Henenberts. There is a trademark on all of them. Despite the fact that this dish is not made of pure silver, it's made with great taste. These knives, for example, have the shape of a peacock. Samovar, 
One of my prides is the collection of samovars, and Polish products occupy a special place here. This is a samovar from the Plevkevich factory of the 19th century. Today such items are exhibited in museums. I must say that in those years they tried to produce a lot of items for use in the kitchen, and they did everything not only at high artistic level, but also with the highest quality. Therefore, now they are of particular value among collectors around the world. This is one of the first sample of samovar. It has a kettle shape, but to boil water there is a special pipe inside it to supply fire. This is the original form. Unlike modern samovars, this could be calmly picked up and poured into glasses. This is a purely oriental product. Therefore, we can say that the first samovars were made in the East and not in Europe. Then they were modernized to a modern form. This is the samovar of Plevkevich factory, was produced in the middle of the 19th century in Warsaw. At that time, samovars of various companies differed from each other in engraving and ornament. They were recognizable by this. This samovar was produced in 1898 by Norblin company and it is called oak. Apparently because the handles, the crane, its legs are made of oak. Given that the production date has been preserved on the product as well as the initials are engraved, this is an exclusive model. This is Frage's three-legged samovar. It has a very unusual shape, such samovars are very rare now. Another beautiful samovar was produced by the Henenbergs brothers. The samovars are well preserved. The fact is that even in those years they were very expensive, so the owners rarely used them. They decorated the home interior with them. And this is a Russian samovar. It also has a very beautiful shape. Its author is the famous Alexander Koch, who sometimes used pearls to decorate his products. And the main feature of the samovar is that it spins around the aces, so there is no need to move it. A collection of ancient and antique objects is like a journey to the past. It's they who give contemporaries an idea of the lifestyle and life of people of the past centuries. Zakir Gahramanov advises all people to collect something if possible. It's not necessary that these are expensive things. It's important that each subject has its own life and over time it can become unique and one of a kind. Just a couple of years ago, I accidentally looked at the profile of one of my friends on social networks. At that time, she traveled to Uzbekistan, enjoyed the color of the country and shared her emotions with friends. So I was interested in information about one unusual museum which is located in Tashkent. Certainly, I shared this information with my Uzbek colleagues and they found it curious too. And especially for this episode of the program, we made a story in order to tell everything about this museum to the viewers of our program. Bakhtiyor Pulatov is the owner of the largest collection of objects made of pumpkin not only in Central Asia but possibly throughout the world. He is a physics teacher by profession. For many years he taught this science to school children who recall his lessons with gratitude. <laughs> Bakhtiyor retired 10 years ago. At first, he could not get used to the fact that now there would be no need to prepare for classes, every morning to rush to school, where children and colleagues were waiting for him. But a creative person will never allow himself to sit around and will definitely find something to do that will bring him pleasure. So our hero came up with a hobby for himself – to make souvenirs from a decorative pumpkin grown with his own hands. And today, many people know that his house is the famous pumpkin museum in Tashkent. When I retired, we got four pumpkins. These are the decorative pumpkins. We all thought that we could do with them and decided that we would try to draw something on them. Then we drew something, then people came, saw and said, wow, how beautiful, there is no such thing anywhere. And these are our national pumpkins. We planted pumpkins and we had so many of them, around 200-300 pumpkins hung in our yard. And we began to draw and paint on all of them. That's how it all started. Then 
This museum has a collection of more than a thousand exhibits and please note that each of them is unique in its own way because the painting on each of them is almost different and isn't repeated. Well, what unites them? Certainly the unique, bright and magical Uzbek color and of course the work of the master. Sometimes it takes a year to paint on one pumpkin. It's very difficult. We're looking at it from different angles and we can't come up with anything. On some pumpkins I spent five years, while to draw on others sometimes took me two or three days. Many visitors to this museum admit that they simply adore it and this is not surprising. Officially it is called the Pumpkin Museum, although in fact you can see a lot of other interesting exhibits here, moreover to the envy of many others. Yes, we are surrounded by many seemingly unnecessary things that we get used to. Eventually we stop noticing them and sometimes throw them away. And we rarely think that some of them keep in themselves antiquity and amazing history. Antique coins you can buy anything with, postcards sent in the mail many years ago, old gramophone records, a typewriter, a wooden iron and a saddle with a century of history. In the collection of Bakhtiar Pulatov, all these items acquire a new, sometimes very important value. There was a priest, Yolan Goch Ota, who lived here, and I started bringing his things to the museum to save them. Then I began to show them to everyone. We have a computing device and arithmometer. Some people don't know what it is, but this is the first calculator. It was brought by people from my native area. We have old scales brought from Zizak. There is an iron made of wood. It was brought to us from Ukraine. The iron is wooden. We have a lot of records, more than 10,000 records. We keep them. We also have a saddle, very old one. 300 years ago it was brought from Kazakhstan. It's a very old saddle and I keep it. As a rule, collecting is the destiny of serious people who are very fond of their hobby, love everything from their collection, and show great interest in this matter throughout their lives. And if anyone tells you that this is a useless occupation, tell him the following story. Two years ago, my husband suffered a stroke, and when he was in an intensive care, everyone was worried about what would happen to his museum. He worries about his pumpkins. And I said that I would throw everything away and I would live like normal people. He thought until my next visit and said, I won't die, don't touch anything, I will survive and continue my work. He loves his old things and his work so much, probably because of this he stayed alive. But out of 10,000 people with his diagnosis, only a few survive. According to Bakhtiar Pulatov, it's important for each collector to know how to create their own collection correctly. Without information, you can hardly expect any success. You need to know the history of everything. There is nothing without it. Therefore, Bakhtiar carefully keeps memories of people from his native area. I have everything written down, who and what brought me, in what year. Some say, why do you need this? And for me, it's very dear. My whole life is in these things. We don't have a car or a big house. Our wealth is in my pumpkins and antiques. This is how I live. Rahmat. 
Well, this is it for today. I advise you to pay attention to the antiquities that surround you, indeed. Among them, there may be those that represent both spiritual and material value. This was Colors of Asia. See you next time.